Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at absorption costing and variable costing. Absorption costing and variable costing are two methods to estimate cost for product. Absorption costing is using GAAP. GAAP is used for external reporting purposes. Variable costing is used for internal decision making. Sometimes it's called the contribution margin method or the direct method. The reason we need to learn about absorption costing and variable costing is because this topic is covered in your managerial accounting, cost accounting, CPA exam BEC section, as well as the CMA exam. So if you are a CPA candidate studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA review course by explaining the material differently. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources to many other courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And take a look at LinkedIn reviews. Students that use my resources to pass the CPA exam, like this recording, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn and reddit so let's go ahead and start our discussion absorption costing versus variable costing absorption costing sometimes it's called full costing just a another term for it okay just so you know in case in case your textbook is using a different method now absorption costing it absorb all product costs so when you are costing the product it's going to absorb direct material direct labor variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead and hopefully you know that these are the product costs and basically absorption costing is what you've been learning all about throughout your managerial accounting or cost accounting course because the new method really is variable costing okay so so it include all the product cost the period cost will include variable selling and administrative fixed selling and administrative now variable costing hopefully from the word you would you would know that variable costing is considered only variable manufacturing cost in costing the product itself in costing the product itself and that is direct direct material direct labor so far so good variable manufacturing overhead this is to, to cost the product then we have period cost period cost we will have variable selling and administrative and fixed selling and administrative. So the difference is, so hold on a second, what happened to this fixed manufacturing overhead? I don't see it. Well, here's what's gonna happen. This fixed manufacturing overhead, that's gonna be the difference between variable and absorption costing. This fixed manufacturing overhead under the variable costing, it's going to be X pence. Why? Because it's considered a period cost. And hopefully we know, we all know, that a period cost get expensed. A period cost get expensed. So what's going to happen? What's going to make the difference between absorption costing and variable costing is how we treat fixed manufacturing overhead. Let me highlight this number in yellow. So this is the number that makes the difference between the two. Okay. Uh, fixed manufacturing overhead. Under absorption costing, this is first considered an asset. Well, let's not, let's use the tech. Not, let's let's be specific. It's inventory. Then once it's sold, it's turned into cost of goods sold. So if it's not sold, it sits in inventory as an asset. Under the variable costing, fixed manufacturing overhead is expensed immediately. So basically, it turned into an expense into a cost immediately immediately during the period. Now. Let's take a look at the income statement format because we have to clarify how the income statement format is set up for each method. The traditional format, and when we, when we say the traditional, we mean absorption costing because this is what we've been learning. We'll take sales minus cost of goods sold. We get to gross profit. Under the contribution margin, CM method, under the contribution margin, we'll take revenues minus variable cost and we'll get contribution margin, not gross margin. So some of the questions on the CPA exam will deal around compute the contribution margin, compute the gross profit margin. So notice here's what I need to qu clarify here. When we say, when we say variable cost, we mean direct material. Let me use a different color because I want 
to grab your attention, direct material, direct labor, variable overhead, and variable selling and administrative. So all of those are variable cost. Now, the product cost is only material, labor, and manufacturing overhead. Okay, but all of them are variable cost to come up to contribution margin. Then from the contribution margin, we will deduct fixed cost under the contribution margin format. Under the traditional format, we deduct selling and administrative, and the selling administrative could be variable, could be fixed, you know, variable and fixed. Then we come up with operating expenses. So again, the only difference between the two methods is how we treat fixed manufacturing overhead, this number here. Under variable costing, we expense it right away. Under absorption costing, we don't expense it until we sell the inventory. So it gets inventoried first. It sits in inventory. It's an asset and it doesn't turn into an expense until we sell it. Now, if we produce everything, if, if we sell everything that we produce, well, guess what? Those will equal to each other. If we sell and produce, if we produce and sell, it's going to be expensed. It's going to be expensed. Therefore, they equal to each other. So let's take a look at some numbers for this to make a little bit more sense. Let's assume we are producing 2,000 units for a particular company and we're selling, we're actually we're producing tablet and we are, uh, we're selling each tablet for $500. We have manufacturing cost of direct labor $150 per tablet, direct material $150, direct labor $75, variable manufacturing overhead $20, and fixed manufacturing overhead overall 111,000. Now this 111,000, it's going to be divided by how many we are going to produce to find the, the fixed manufacturing overhead per one tablet. Okay, now we have selling an administrative cost. The variable selling an administrative cost is $62 per tablet. Then we have a fixed selling an administrative cost in a total of 116,000. First, let's find the product cost. For direct material, it's going to be under absorption and it's going to be under variable. Direct labor, same thing. Variable manufacturing overhead, the same thing. Now, fixed manufacturing overhead. The cost is $55.50. Under variable cost, we don't account for fixed manufacturing overhead. So what happened to this very fixed manufacturing overhead? Does it evaporate? Does it go away? No, under the variable method, it's going to be the whole thing will be expense. The 111,000. It's the 111,000. 111,000 will be expensed. So we don't we don't we don't factor it into the product cost. Therefore, the total unit product cost is $300.50 for absorption and 245 for variable. Now, if you want to copy these numbers down because I'm going to be using them on the next slide. So pause and copy the numbers down. Now, variable costing and absorption costing would would result in different operating income when either unit produce are more then units sold or unit produce are less. Simply put, when there's a difference between what you produce and what you sold, if they're equal to each other, the numbers, the operating income will be the same. If unit produced equal unit sold, and I want you to understand this before we start to go into numbers, unit produced equal unit sold, it means this whole thing, this 111,000 went to inventory, then went to cost. And obviously, under absorption costing, this is what I mean, under absorption costing, and under variable costing, we expense it. Therefore, the 111000 was expend on, expensed under both methods because we produced, and whatever we produced was sold. So whatever we included in fixed manufacturing overhead, we expensed. Whatever we produced to inventory, we, we expense. And under variable costing, we expense. We expense both. Voila, they, they equal to each other. When unit produce is not equal to unit sold, then we'll have to, we'll have a different story. So the best way to illustrate this is to work actual example. Assume there is no beginning finished goods inventory. Uh, the number of units produced is 2,000. The, the number of units sold is 2,000. There we go. What does that mean? It means the operating income will not differ whether you are using absorption or variable and we'll prove that. There's no ending inventory of finished goods be because all units are sold and we have no beginning inventory. Operating income is the same for both methods. Let me show you how it works. Sales revenue is a million because we produced 2,000. We sold each unit at 500. 2,000 unit times $300.50 is your cost of goods sold. Your gross profit, the term that we use for absorption costing, is $399 minus selling and administrative costs, variable. 
which is 2,000 unit times $62.50, minus the fixed selling and administrative. Total operating income is 158, and we have no inventory left. Inventory is zero. Let's take a look at variable costing for the same company. Sales is the same. Variable cost is we have 2,000 unit times 245, the product cost minus the variable selling and administrative cost, 2,000 unit times 6250. So the contribution margin, the terminology we use for variable costing is 385. So notice those are different. Okay. Then we deduct fixed cost, the whole thing, the 111,000, and we, we deduct the fixed selling and administrative cost. So notice we have variable cost in one place and fixed cost in the other. And operating income, notice operating income is the same, is the same whether we are using both methods. And the reason it's the same, it's because every unit we sold, every every unit we produce, which is 2,000, we sold. Therefore, ending inventory obviously is zero if we sold everything. Now, the best way to illustrate the concept is to work another example for different assumptions. Assume the following. There is no beginning finished goods inventory. The company produced 2,500 tablets. The company sold 2,000. What does that mean? It means you have an ending inventory, 500 unit. What does that mean? If I know I have more units in ending inventory, it means my absorption costing will have less expenses. Less, to be more specific, not expenses, less cost of goods sold. Because some of those units, 500, they're not sold. We're not going to expense them. Under variable costing, we're going to have more expenses under the period cost because we're going to expense all fixed manufacturing overhead and we're going to show this in numbers that i just told you hopefully you can follow this so we have 500 in ending inventory therefore we started with zero unit we produced 2500 sold 2000 we have 500 unit remaining here's the unit cost 150 75 20. now notice the fixed manufacturing overhead 111 divided by 2500 so the, what i want to what what i want you to notice is our fixed manufacturing overhead per per unit went down now it is 40 44 dollars and 40 cent in the prior example it was it was let me take a look it was uh, it should be here uh fixed manufacturing overhead it was 50 around 50 dollars let me just show you um I want you to sh I want you to see this. It's fifty five dollars and fifty cent. So how did our fixed manufacturing overhead went down? We produced more unit. So notice, as you produce more unit, your fixed unit per your fixed cost per unit for manufacturing uh, fixed manufacturing overhead goes down. Okay, okay, kind of it, it looks good for the managers. Like oh great, why why it goes down? Because what's happening is you are using the same electricity. You are you are using the same electricity but producing more units. Therefore, let's look at absorption costing. We sold 2,000 units at $500. 2,000 units times 298, the number here. This is our gross profit. Our variable cost, 2,000 units times $62.50 minus the fixed selling and administrative. So operating income, 18200 Under variable costing, 2,000 units times 500. 2,000 units times 245. 2,000 unit times $62.50, sales minus variable cost gives us contribution margin. The language is very important here. We're going to expense all of fixed manufacturing costs, which is 111, and we're going to expense fixed selling and administrative. We're going to take contribution margin minus the fixed cost. The operating income is 158. So notice the operating income is lower, so our income is lower than absorption costing is because we expensed this whole this whole amount 111,000 variable costing did not expense the whole amount why because we still have 500 unit 500 unit and those 500 unit let me show you what happened really well let's compute the difference between the two first let me show you how you can compute the difference between the two so what is the difference what's the difference in profit between variable costing and uh, absorption costing uh, absorption costing 180,200 minus 158 for variable. So the difference is 22,200. Let me show you where that difference came from. We still have 500 units unsold, and those 500 units absorbed in them 
44 dollars and 40 cent of 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 fixed manufacturing overhead therefore if we take four five hundred times 44 dollars and 40 cent and voila 22,000 this is what explained the difference and this is why absorption costing will have a lower uh, a lower cost which is a higher profit is because 500 unit are inventory and those 500 unit what's hitting what's hitting in them what's absorbed in them is that $44.40 that's kind of staying on the balance sheet which is right here look um, finished goods inventory we still have 500 unit part of those is fixed manufacturing overhead okay and this is what created the difference and obviously the 144 and the 144 700 and 122 500 the difference is 22,200 now let's go ahead and change the scenario again let's go ahead and change the scenario assume the following there are 500 units in beginning inventory uh, and beginning finished goods inventory that cost 144 700 which is where this, where this came from kind of don't 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 be surprised it came from here so it came from the prior prior year because this is what we started with and uh, the company produced 1500 unit we're starting with 500 we produced 1500 and we sold 2000 what happened here is this we produced notice what happened we produced uh 1500 sold 2000 hold on a second how can you sell more than you produce well the reason i sold more than i produce is because i have 500 from the prior period that's why but if i'm going to sell more than what i produced you're going to see what's going to happen under variable costing i'm going to have more profit under variable costing i'm going to have more profit because some of the cost was expensed in the prior year for for the variable costing for the absorption costing now all the cost that was hitting on the inventory and in inventory on the balance sheet it's going to be released to the income statement let's see how it works let's work this example again direct material direct labor and variable cost is the same for both now the fixed overhead per unit is 111 times 1500 notice fixed overhead went up now fixed overhead per unit fixed manufacturing overhead because we only produce 1500 unit so the unit cost under under variable is 319 under absorption is 319 under variable 245 it's only the same thing labor material and manufacturing overhead let's compute the income statement sales is a million cost of goods sold is number of units from the prior period times 289.40 this is from prior period and 1500 unit times 319 for this period so total cost is 623200 sales minus cost of goods sold equal to gross profit variable cost is 2000 unit times 6250 fixed selling and administrative 116 contribute uh, gross profit minus selling uh, minus fixed selling and administrative will give us 135800 we sold everything we have no inventory let's take a look at variable costing revenue of a, of a million variable cost 2000 times 245 2000 unit times 6250 which is the same as here you know 125 but now it's under variable cost contribution margin is 385 a million minus 615 fixed cost is fixed manufacturing cost 111 fixed selling and administrative cost 116 so notice here what's happening is fixed manufacturing cost is 111 111 now we are expensing this 111 but notice what happened over all operating income operating income is 158 so it's 158 158 okay it says more than 135 800 why it's more it's because from the prior year remember the prior year for this company under variable costing they had some inventory that that was not released that was not released to the income statement now it was released right here let me highlight to you it was released right here so those 500 units are released those 500 unit had additional they had additional um, fixed manufacturing overhead and as a result we have more expenses here we have less expenses here now because remember we sold we sold 2000 but we produce only 1500 therefore 
operating income is 185 and the inventory is gone now the best way also to look at this is to look at the whole picture what i mean by a whole picture look at look at the results over three years kind of to see the effects let's take a look at the results of three years this is year one and we already did all of this income was one operating income was 158 operating income was 158 why because in unit one unit produce equal to unit sold therefore absorption operating income will equal to variable operating income fair enough year two year two is this one right here remember in year two we produced more units than we sold if we produce more units than we sold some of the cost for absorption costing will be hitting will be hitting an inventory on the balance sheet therefore we're going to have more operating income 18200 than operating income under variable costing and remember i told i showed you the difference and i, and I showed you how to compute the difference in year three the opposite happened unit produce were less than the unit sold therefore absorption costing income will be less than variable costing absorption uh, absorb absorption costing income 135 800 is less than 158 then we zero down inventory is gone so let's see what happened over a three-year period the first thing i want to tell you in the long run and not in the long run when everything is expensed, notice operating income is the same over a period of three years, 474,474,000 in total. Why? Because in the long run, you are going to expense everything once you sell it. Therefore, everything will consolidate, will not consolidate. Everything will clear. All your costs will clear into the income statement. Okay, therefore, the two will equal to each other. Sales is obviously the same. Again, cost of goods sold will differ and selling an administrative, which they're not you know they're not comparable you know cost of goods sold versus contribution margin of course they will differ because of the fixed manufacturing overhead how we treat this and selling an administrative cost versus fixed cost those will differ because uh, because the way we treat fixed manufacturing overhead but overall over three year period over three year period once again once the inventory is cleared the two numbers are equal to each other overall they are equal to each other so this is an overview about variable costing versus absorption costing it's very important to understand this topic whether you're a candidate for the cpa exam or an accounting student now in the next session i will i will work an example just to show you how this method is being is used for what purpose obviously managers use variable costing because they don't care about absorption costing because managers are concerned with what cost is going to vary with, with their with their operation they believe they believe manufacturing overhead is irrelevant because it's a sunk cost there is nothing that they can do about that therefore they will produce using variable costing okay but anyway the best way to illustrate this concept is through an example once again i'm going to invite you to visit my website farhatlectures.com and if you're a cpa candidate invest in your career try try it for a month if it works it will be great if not then you, you would learn something good luck study hard and of course stay safe